Okay, two things today. One, Devon got a new uh, point release or patch release. So 0.1.4 is out and we need to upgrade. And second, I've filed this bug. I'm not sure if it's a bug in my own code or my implementation or if it's a bug in Devon yet, but the maintainer asked me to check to see if the same thing happens with Criterion. So this video is going to be setting up Criterion. Criterion, of course, is the benchmarking crate that existed before Devon did. If you're interested in the sort of legacy here, um, Criterion is a crate that was created as a mirror of the Criterion crate in the Haskell ecosystem. And while the Docstar RS page and the README don't really have much in the way of showing the output, there is a user guide which will show example HTML reports, which is very cool. And we can click on say one of the benchmarks and see all of the graphs and plot outputs and things like that. I really love this output. It's one of the things that I miss from Devon, or rather it's one of the things that I miss from Criterion while we're using Devon. And of course you can get that sort of plotting and graphing in really any way you want it, including things like CSV output, which is really nice for me because I'm trying to put this in a readme on GitHub and the Devon output currently isn't really the best for that. Criterion's goals for the project are to be a very usable benchmarking crate that you can use without a background in statistics but is still powerful and statistically rigorous. I think this is pretty similar to what Devon is trying to do, except Devon is trying to take the ease of use even further. There are also extensions and related projects. For example, this criterion cycles per byte allows you to measure uh, ticks, which is not something that I care about. I don't care about things at this level, uh, but it's very cool that you can. So here's what we need to add to start with. We need to add Criterion as a dev dependency. In this case, they've automatically enabled HTML reports as a feature, which is very cool. And then of course we need to set up a different benchmark because we can't reuse the ones that we have from Devon. So in my workspace route, I'm going to add Criterion to my workspace dependencies. And then since day one is the first day that we need to update, I am going to add Criterion and we're gonna use the workspace defined version of Criterion. And I'm going to move this down into dev dependencies right next to Devon, which honestly I should also do with RS test now that I see it. So while we're here, let's move a couple of things down into dev dependencies. And this should probably also happen for the daily template, which I'll do after the video, I think. So let's set up a second benchmark here. Let's call it day one criterion. And this will be benchmarks criterion. Note that we should give it a name. We don't have to because the file name would propagate, but we do have to set this harness to false. And then this is sort of the default criterion benchmark, if you will. So in day one in benches, we'll create a new file called benchmark criterion.rs, dump this sort of example code into the benchmark. And we should be able to cargo bench bench day one. Actually, did I name it? Yeah, it's day one criterion. So we're gonna use this name to select the benchmark. I made a mistake inside of the workspace cargo toml. I specified a benchmark, which I was not supposed to do. There are certain things that can live in a workspace cargo toml, and there are certain things that can't. Profiles are something that live in the root. Benchmark definitions are something that need to live in each project. So we run this and it compiles and runs as you would expect when you run something. And the output here is a little bit different. Uh, Criterion spends some time warming up and then it collects a bunch of samples. And it says we've got a 20 microsecond runtime for FIB20, some outliers statistically. I usually mostly just ignore this and assume that Criterion has kind of done things the right way for me. So for FIB20, which is the name of our default benchmark here, FIB20, we've collected a hundred samples, which is I believe a approximately the same that Devon does in an estimated five seconds. One of the interesting comparisons here is that the Devon benchmarks seem to run much faster, um, except for the, you know, benchmarks that are slow. In this case, the uh, Aho Korosik is running at like 27 milliseconds. Is that the same that we have currently? Yeah, so we're looking at 27, 29 milliseconds, uh, which feels pretty long for what we're doing here when all of the other solutions run in microseconds. So let me split my editor here and we'll open the benchmarks that I have for Devon. And we kind of just need to translate what we have here on the right to what we have on the left. In this case, we get rid of this Fibonacci function because we're not using it. We pull in day one. We also need to pull in some additional stuff from Criterion. And then we'll name this like part one bench. And we need a part one process. And we include the stir inside of this black box function, just like before. Black box, basically Rust, given the opportunity will optimize the absolute most out of your program well not the most but you know it'll it'll optimize a lot out of your program and if you're not using something if it thinks you're not using the output of this process function it could optimize this whole thing away so black box is a way to say hey actually 
like ignore the fact that you could figure out that we're not actually using this and just do it anyway. So let's see if that runs for us. And it does, and it takes about 25 or 26 microseconds. Looks like the lower end is 25.5 and the upper end is 26.2. And interestingly, according to our benchmarks, it looks like our part one is running faster when we run it with Criterion on a Mac. So this is on Mac. So I'm comparing it against the Mac numbers. And this is actually one of the things that I was really interested in, the benchmarking differences of Criterion and Devon. One of the really nice things about working with Criterion is it will, as you change things, tell you how much your program actually changed. So this is changing in like 1% increments because it's kind of very small numbers and also just kind of, um, you know, very small differences in how my computer is running at a given time can affect this level. So I'm not really interested in that. Uh, that isn't like an improvement in the runtime or anything. That's approximately the same runtime to me. But if we run the same thing with Devon, it looks like... So the output, first of all, is a little bit harder to read in a terminal. Um, I'm, I think they're doing programmatic output in the future, so this will get easier for us. But part one... The fastest was 26 microseconds and the slowest was 135, which is a huge difference from what Criterion is showing. And then it says the median is 39-ish and what is it? The mean is 37. So very interesting. There is a way in which our program is running at the same speed across both benchmarks, but Devon also seems to have some either more information um, I'm not quite sure because I don't know what Devon is doing under the hood. This is my first kind of set of projects using Devon. So yeah, I don't know. But it is interesting to see these differences. So we can just continue and create a bunch more benchmarks. But one of the things that I want to do since we're using Criterion is compare them. So I've set this up on the left-hand side to be in a bench with group. You can see that I already ran this so that we could see a little bit of a change. This 4% change is really not interesting. For me, this is probably within the noise threshold here. But on the left-hand side, we can set up a benchmark group and then we finish that group when we're done. And otherwise we just keep adding benchmarks to that group um, and it will keep running them for us like this. One really interesting thing is that with the setup that we just set up, we don't have to use black box anymore because bench with input does that for us. And also if we look at the numbers here, uh, so we're benchmarking part two and we're benchmarking part two nom. So in criterion, we're looking at 142 microseconds. Did I benchmark the right thing? Let's make sure first. We need to benchmark part two nom here. So part two is right, but part two nom is not. So let's run this again before we look. So obviously performance has quote regressed. Uh, we changed the benchmark. So we changed it from being part two's process to part two nom's process, which we know is slower. So we definitely would see sort of a regression, so to speak, in the benchmark itself. So we're seeing about 142 pretty consistently for part two and 376 seems pretty consistent in part two for nom. If we look at our medians here, that's within margin of error, in my opinion, for the median. So 138 for Devon and 142 for Criterion. And then 375, 376 versus 357. Devon again has a little bit more variation, it looks like. Uh, and I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure if this is, you know, running inside of Criterion and getting discarded because it is saying it found outliers. But one of the really fun things is that we can open in the target directory in Criterion and report there's an index.html. So I ran a cargo clean. Let's do a clean benchmark and look at the HTML output. So again, our Criterion benchmarks here are very consistent. Whenever I run Criterion benchmark, it says 141, 142, 142. 375, 376, 377. So these are always basically the same numbers that I'm getting from Criterion, whereas the numbers that I get from Devon tend to vary a little bit more, I think, especially when you start looking at the fastest and the slowest, um, the median varies a little bit less, but I'm not even really sure that I wanna see the fastest and the slowest by default. I'm not sure that matters to me, especially if it's just like something went weird on my computer. So if we open the file in target, which is target criterion report index.html, and we go look at that page, this is our wonderful page. Uh, this is our part two violin plot and a bunch of comparisons for these things. Now it does take a little bit of effort to be able to read these plots 
if you've never seen them before. The violin plot, which is the thing that we're looking at, is a statistical graphic for comparing probability distributions, whatever, whatever. You can read the Wikipedia page if you want. It's similar to a box plot, but there's a little bit of a difference uh, in the way it's displayed. So basically what we're seeing here is the full distribution of kind of values that were in our test. We've kind of got like the median right here in the middle. This is the distribution of probability. So a bigger value, like a bigger kind of vertical here, means that there are more of our tests or more of our benchmarks in this area. And you can see that the nom actually goes from something like 300, which is some outlier, all the way up to 790 up here, it looks like. And if I click on this, I can make it a little bit bigger. You can see it a little bit better. So we've got microseconds on the bottom. We've got part two here, part two nom here. Part two is obviously faster in general and more consistent down here, whereas nom tends to be a little bit more variable. You know, there's not too many runs up here in the 700 area, but I would be fairly confident in saying that this is, you know, going to run most of the time in about 375 microseconds. And the vast majority of the time, it'll run in under 500. Whereas kind of part two by default runs within say 140 to 150 all the time. And then we can kind of look at these individually in more depth. We've got the average time here on the bottom for part two, part two, and the number of iterations here on the y-axis. So you can see kind of the same plot that we just looked at. The orange dots are kind of outliers. The blue bar is the mean. This graph is that probability uh, distribution. So it's the, you know, most things came in around 142, we'll say, and fewer things came in. Like there's one thing here at like 149. And there's two down here at like 137, we'll call it. And this is the performance as the number of iterations goes up. So total sample time on the y-axis, number of iterations on the x-axis. This is a linear increase. If we increase the number of times we run it, we increase the number of times or the amount of time it takes. And we can see here again that the nom output is a little bit more noisy. There's a little bit more in terms of like outliers. It would be interesting to compare different parsing libraries like this, but these are very clearly uh, two very different graphs. And if we had different, let me, I guess, change this uh, so that you can see this. And if we had different sort of amounts of input, we really only have our test input and our actual input. But if we had different amounts of input, we would be able to chart that as it increased as well. And there's a bunch of other things in Criterion as well. There's Cargo Criterion. There's something with more accuracy that I've actually never used uh, that I think is called Lie or Lay. You can, of course, configure all the statistical stuff if you're into that and know what you're doing. I do really appreciate that there's these like notes of caution. Benchmarking, in my mind, is something that takes a real lot of effort, more effort than people really think it does to produce real valuable like reusable benchmarks that really mean things. So this says Criterion was designed to produce robust statistics when possible, but can't account for everything. The performance improvements and regressions listed in the above examples were created just by switching my laptop between battery power and wall power rather than changing the code under test. And this is just like something that happens with benchmarks, right? If you run in CI, CI is a noisier environment. Maybe you're running on a shared machine with other code that can affect your benchmarks. Things like whether your laptop is plugged in can affect your benchmark. So you need to keep all of this kind of stuff in mind when you're actually doing benchmarks. I do really like the output of Criterion a little bit better than the output of Devon currently, but Devon is newer and hasn't had as much time to develop. So I think I'll keep this as we move forward uh, and we'll start looking at the, not only the output of Devon, but the comparison between Criterion and Devon, I think. And I think I can just keep that index.html in the repo and you can just go see it whenever you want. So that is a mild introduction to Criterion. Uh, we'll use it more moving forward. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.